Hi, I'm Steve Pomeroy, uh, a Senior Research Fellow at the Centre for Urban Research and Education at uh, Carleton University in Ottawa. Uh, Duncan's asked me to speak a little bit about um, economic um, uh, effects of investment in housing generally, I guess affordable housing more, and more, more particularly, um, and uh, how we actually assess and measure these, these effects. Um, I think you know we've all heard uh, many uh, uh, statements from politicians and budget statements, that type of thing. Uh, so there's a lot of rhetoric around the, uh, the economic impacts of, uh, of in various types of investment, infrastructure in particular, and, and, and housing investment. And we've certainly seen examples of that in the past, with ministers standing up in budget speeches and uh, uh, speaking about uh, you know these particular initiatives, which are coincidentally about housing, but they put the emphasis on the fact they're going to uh, create jobs and stimulate the economy. Um, we had a, obviously a significant stimulus initiative in the post global financial crisis 2009-2011 which was certainly full of lots of that rhetoric. Uh, uh, the, um, the Infrastructure Canada the Department of Performance, Performance Report uh, released in 2012 referred back to the stimulus period and the minister at the time uh, you know, you know, characterized this as a fund uh, that was going to uh, create jobs and uh, boost the economy. Um, yet yeah, in that performance report, it didn't actually speak about how many jobs were actually created. In a separate report later that year, uh, the Department of Finance reporting in, in a, a final report to Canadians on the impacts of the stimulus initiative uh, through 250 pages didn't actually mention uh, how many jobs have been created, despite the fact that the whole initiative was really about creating, re re redeploying underutilized uh, labor and, and creating uh, um, and or preserving and or creating new jobs. Um, Annex uh, 2, finally, after about 275 pages, uh, did get to a discussion of the, uh, the employment impact of, of the spending initiatives and spoke about the uh, $21 billion on infrastructure and that had created or, or preserved 96,000 jobs. Um, housing was about $2 billion of that. It isn't broken down in terms of its particular um, contribution. Um, so how do we actually measure uh, the uh, yeah, the employment effects of these different types of investment uh, as a way to justify uh, government to, or advocate to government to invest in in particular areas and in our case uh, in the social housing area um, and as the infrastructure Canada um, report uh, refers to uh, they kind of they tend to enumerate how many projects were created whether that's a pipeline whether it's a bridge whether it's a a housing development or the retrofit of a housing housing project um, and uh, they count up projects uh, they do uh, acknowledge that project managers could potentially identify how many folks were employed in that project but it's imprecise and, and more so when you aggregate across different projects of different duration um, so that what is what is tended to be used is rather than counting actual jobs created um, is to use uh, broader uh, macroeconomic modeling uh, um, uh, methodologies um, to make estimates. Uh, and the other thing that happens here is, well, there's two things going on. One is we want to have you know, apples and apples. So we want to measure for each type of investment, what are the full-time equivalent annual jobs created uh, from that particular investment? And secondly, um, you know, in terms of the, uh, the economic effects, it's not just the direct job that's created, it's the indirect job uh, and, and induced effects. And by that, we mean um, the direct job is, the, is the, you know, the laborer on the construction site. Indirect uh, jobs would be the guy that drives the truck uh, to bring materials, lumber, uh, roof, roofing tiles, whatever it happens to be, to the building site. Um, and then the, the induced impacts would be the result of the, uh, the laborer or the truck driver, then taking their money and spending in the grocery store or the hardware store or wherever they happen to spend it, and how that then gets recirculated back into the economy. So we're generally dependent on these, finite, these uh, macroeconomic models, which are maintained uh, in pretty well all of our countries uh, by the, uh, either the Department of Finance and or our statistical agencies. So we, we in both our Department of Finance and Statistics Canada, uh, they maintain a model uh, to try to develop estimates on these effects in terms of looking at the various inputs and the various outputs by different industry classifications um, and by collecting a bunch of data across all of those industries and uh, make some determinations. Um, and the one that's probably the most easily understood is uh, using uh, an investment of $1 million across a range of industries. Uh, what is the output in terms of the number of direct, indirect, and induced jobs that are created? Uh, 
And it's in this area that the housing sector tends to stack up quite well against other industries. Um, in, in the Canadian context, uh, it obviously varies across jurisdictions, um, but uh, at the aggregate level in Canada, uh, for every million dollars uh, invested, and this is 2016 data from the Statistics Canada Input Output uh, Multiplier Model, um, it, this creates roughly uh, just over five uh, direct jobs um, and a um, well, actually uh, 4.6 direct jobs, uh, 3.5 indirect and another 2.1 um, induced for a total of 10.3 uh, FTEs or, or full-time equivalent jobs per year for the uh, million dollars invested and that stacks up quite well against other industries such as you know a big employer in Canada of course the, the resource sector uh, the oil sector uh, it's two, two or three uh, more jobs per million than it, than it generated in that particular sector um, so it has been seen to be quite a strong contributor um, to the extent to which uh, we're both creating jobs and investing in an area uh, where there is a dire need to do things, particularly in the sort of the, the homeless area of the, the housing system, where we're trying to make sure that folks who have, were in the emergency shelter and have been temporarily housed um, are now actually not being just sent back to emergency shelters, but are actually getting housing, so building housing quickly, uh, obviously as a, a dual benefit of, of achieving that particular policy outcome and the, uh, the, the job stimulus piece as well. I think there is an interesting question in the current uh, context. Uh, historically, uh, when in recessions, and we have had a downturn in construction activity, a significant reduction in the number of uh, national housing starts, um, and a need to uh, redeploy um, uh, employment in the construction sector. Um, and infrastructure, certainly infrastructure writ, writ large, and, and including housing, you know, has generally been a big part of that particular stimulus type a set of packages. Um, in the current context, I think you know much of the job loss, uh, while there has been some uh, reduction in employment in the construction sector due to a pause in construction and certain construction sites being closed down, most of those now in most parts of Canada have reopened. Um, and uh, so there really isn't a bunch of excess labor laying around looking for uh, somewhere to go and work. Um, but there is an awful lot of excess labor from the hospitality uh, industry in particular, uh, restaurant industries and so on. Um, and certainly uh, you know, one area that's been very prominent in the Canadian context, um, and the uh, nursing homes and care facilities uh, have been highlighted as the epicenter really of COVID infections. Um, and when one looks at the economic multipliers there, well, Canada, you know, well, sorry, uh, residential construction uh, has a multiplier effect of 10 jobs per million dollars invested. Uh, the, the nursing and care facility industry um, has a, a multiplier of 25 direct plus another five indirect and induced for a total of 30 jobs. Um, and so in the current environment, if government is looking at addressing serious deficiencies in the quality of care um, for each million dollars invested, they would actually generate three times as many jobs uh, by investing in that particular sector. So I think Canada does have to think about, as to other countries, uh, you know, what is the nature of the problem uh, and what kind of stimulus and which areas of the economy and which types of employment uh, should we be trying to stimulate. We obviously all think housing is important in certain aspects of it, so supportive housing where you do have care workers in there and certainly in the social assistance um, sector sort of broadly defined in the industrial um, classification. Uh, the, you know, the social assistance sector also has a multiplier of close to 30 jobs, quite equivalent to, um, to healthcare and nursing homes. So we could make the case for building uh, and expanding supply in the permanent supportive housing area uh, and also adding on the, the ongoing effects of those um, support workers, uh, which would have a significant Social, social health and economic benefit as well. Um, so I look forward to the discussion as we go forward. Thank you.